Last season, we didn't do too good in the league. Finishing a whopping 15 points behind first place and eventual champions, Napoli. And 5 points off second place, Juventus. However, we still got a third place finish, but that wasn't enough to satisfy me. I was even more unsatisfied when we lost 1-0 to Barcelona in the UEFA Champions League final. And even more unsatisfaction came when we lost 1-0 to Milan in the Coppa Italia. However, we did win at, at least one thing, in which was the EA Sports FC Super Cup, also against Milan. This time, instead of losing 1-0, we actually won 1-0. But obviously this is the tournament that is kind of not wanted. If it's anything to go by the Community Shield in England, it's basically a friendly tournament. And I think it's also played in um, abroad, so it's not even cared for much because the fans can't really go and watch it. But yeah, improving to do. And the problem is we're calling £45 million pounds in the red. £35 million pounds to spend in the transfer budget. If I spend all of that, we'll be probably 80 million pound in the bread by the end of the France window if we don't sell anyone so I think selling people is priority bringing people in cheaper can get better and maybe even be sort of a profit are the ones that will be coming in but with Donato Ronci now four and a half star reputation manager will this be his final season with Inter and will he go to bigger and better things I tell you now if we win the Serie A we might just well leave for next season Hello everybody, I'm Matthew Olsen and Sam Hanks. Welcome back to another episode of the High Five Journeyman with our manager Donato Ronchi. He's now 55 years old, continental pro license, international global level, past experience, four and a half star reputation manager. And his personality is probably determined. That's not bad. I mean, a lot of transfers ended up happening in the summer window. So let's quickly go and show you all of them, shall we? First off, Thiago Santos was sold to Wolves. He hardly played two seasons we've been at Inter and he was getting unhappy every so often. Um, so just decided to sell him £8 million, rising to £9 million if he plays his first game for Wolves in the league, which I think he'll do and I think we'll get the £9 million all up front. That's not a bad deal there. People who signed, Martin Angus signed for us as our backup striker. Comes in for £17.5 million from Copenhagen. It's a bit of a lengthy and big offer, but if he can get anywhere close to his potential ability, it'll be worth it. And we can sell this guy for that like £100 million in a couple of years if he doesn't work out. And some companies, another player that joined us, squad player coming in for just under £10 million from Espanyol. Barnabas Nwankwo. Um, comes in from Roma now he was originally a Porto player before moving to Roma for £32 million and now he's joined us for £14.5 million or just under £14.5 million from Roma he played a lot last season he was their main centre back and they've let him go I would say on the cheap and yeah I think we've got a good player here and if he can play all the more better but he'll probably just be a backup Miguel Castineras is another player that's joined us. He was released by Real Madrid C or Real Madrid Castilla or Real Madrid actual team. He come on and joined us just as a youngster. He could get really, really good if he gets his potential ability. That's why we signed him. Alvatore Innocenze has also joined us as our kind of fringe player DM. I noticed we needed a backup DM and we we're loaning all the players out and I thought he could do a decent job for at least one year. He's also makes the quota with us having to sign Italian players because the ball at the point of the start of the season we weren't happy that I wasn't signing enough Italian players the past two seasons. So for this third season I focused on the Italian players with some more, more other players from other nationalities coming in as well but he's joined us from Lazio for 6.5 million I think that's a good deal. Paolo Mascoli another player that has joined us this time from Marseille he was also Italian, comes in for £12 million from Marseille. Hopefully he can do good to get to his potentiality. Uh, however, he's got to train quite well and do perform quite well and get better in his current ability because we've got really good players in the uh, AMR position. So yeah, he's got to uh, probably work harder than anywhere else on the pitch. Silvio Russo, another Italian player has joined us. He's 
going to be a lift back, three and a half star potentiality to one and a half star current ability. Comes in for five million pounds from Borussia Dortmund. Renzo Grinelli has also joined us. This is a two point two million pound deal from FC Porto, where he was played quite regularly, I would say, for Porto. Um, two appearances off on the start and fourteen off the bench. And though he did get five goals and got a 7.45, that's why we saw him. That's why we've picked him up for 2.2 million. If we can sell him for a profit of 4 million, if he doesn't work out a couple of years down the line, that's all the better. He comes in just as a backup fringe player. Also, marking that Italian player that we need to appease the board. So, the Sacchi, I don't know how to pronounce that name, but it might be similar to that. Comes in as a centre back. This was direct to football in the end. Um, he starts off at Trabzon Sport, ends up going to Everton, but then went back to Trabzon Sport for, what, £5 million loss for Everton after only playing two games. And he did really well past two seasons with Trabzon Sport. He's actually he's done past four, past four seasons with Trabzon Sport. And in terms of the whole game save, he's only had two ratings below seven, which was his third season with Trabzon Sport and his two games for Everton. He comes in for £15 million. Pounds. I think he'll be a brilliant player. Uh, I know no matter what, he'll just be a squad player, but if we can get him in and get him bedding in with the rest of the players and being decent, it's a worthy investment. Kudal Blasio is also another player that comes in. He's one and a half star current ability, five star potential ability. Comes in on £16.5 million pound transfer from Roma. If he gets this potential ability, he'll be the best player in world football. Gustavo Henrique is also another player that's joined us. He's just going to be back up for Angelini, who is our right back we signed a couple of seasons ago in our first year with Inter and has become one of the best players in the right back slot in Italy. Knock off, knock off the guy we signed for Eintracht Frankfurt, um, Venturelli, who's even better. He comes in as the backup for him. I've had to accept him Pond player, he's not going to be an important player, I, mean, I tell you that now, he's going to be back up, he's going to be squad player, or even impact sub. But he was playing for International now, um, in 2013, did quite well there, Milan bought him, paid him seven times, he didn't do too badly for saying there were six of them were off the bench, and then he's been bought for us for 17.5 million. Getting another good player off our rivals Milan is a good idea and I think he can do a decent job. And Murphy Matambo comes in as another centre back, just a squad player. Comes in a bit of an expensive deal, £22.5 million pound from Ren. But if he can get to his potential ability, that'll be all good. I reckon he can yeah, do a decent job for the first season and maybe even do better next season if he does play quite a lot of the games. Then on the out, so Razvan. Grosso, who was, whose deal was expiring at the end of the year, has gone to Lecce on a free transfer. David Fratesse, who we were trying to sell for the past two years, we were accepting bids. He was rejecting them. He's ended up going to Ren um, on a £31,500 per week rate deal uh, on a free transfer. Hopefully he'll have a decent time there, but he's not what he's not wanted there, and yeah, he didn't do much with me, under me either way. And Paul Caparsi was sold. I was not looking to sell him. He was a very decent backup. And to be honest, last season, I thought I thought the season he was on loan when he came in in January and played five games. I thought, okay, this is a waste of money for nineteen million pounds because he's never going to play. He ended up playing twenty-seven times. Sure, nineteen were off the bench. He didn't do too badly, in all honesty. And Bruce Dortmund have paid twenty-seven and a half million pounds for him. It's twenty two and a half point five million pound, but the extra five million pounds come on from him playing one game for Borussia Dortmund, which he's already done. He's already played four games for them. A good deal there. Some youngsters such as Luca Manini, who has improved drastically from what one and a half star, two star corner ability when he joined us. He's now two and a half star corner ability going to Cremonese on loan. So Alberto, who could be in my first team plans, and we decided to loan him out. In the end to Wolfsburg, hopefully he'll get even better than he currently is. Luca Monza, to be honest, he's gone down in his current ability, it was two and a half star 
um, but at the end of last season it's now gone down to two star hopefully he can get to three star or two and a half star by the end of next season or this season and get into the first team for next year he's gone to Strasbourg Augustin Aquino who is a youngster coming when he was only 18 he's been loaned out again because I just don't find him having a place at the side he ended up going to Chelsea on loan which goes to show you how good a player he is Massimiliano Moretto is also left us on a loan to Bruno he, he can play the only position he can play now that thing's insane he's not even competent at it well he's competent but he's not uh, accomplished or natural so I don't think the direct football will, uh, I don't think the assistant manager will ever play him when we're on holiday in mode so yeah he's been loaned out I might be sold next year Federico Chiesa has been sold he had a year left on his contract I don't want I didn't want to renew it so we ended up selling to Alnacea for £16 million pound. we also sold Dario Campagna he is a youngster that was good on the current ability I don't think it was good on the potential ability so we sold him uh, just around about £220,000 to Atalanta Francisco Rivera who could be in a first deployment but like I said we've got many good players out of right winger he's been loaned out to Palermo then Latour Martinez has been sold yeah I wasn't wanting to do this but he had a year left he had a year left on his contract and Al Etihad kept coming in for bids he was getting unhappy in the end they said okay 62 million up front or like 50 million up front 12 million on the side over the course of three years and then another 10 million if he plays one game they accepted that i think he'll get that one game if you're not if he's not already got it already and yeah he hopefully be a good investment on the sale because he was 34 years old he was nowhere near as good as last season whether that was because his um physicals maybe had maybe had decreased for the advanced forward role but he can be a really good player for in Saudi Arabia he could still be a good player for us but selling him when he's old for 70 million is not that bad a deal we also sold Ferdi Kagioglu he got unhappy that Alahenti had coming in for him in the end we got a massive massive deal 38 million pound uh, over the course of well I think 20 million up from 18 over the course of three years and an extra four and a half million if he plays one game and considering i think he only joined for like 20 million no he joined for 31 and a half million and it could rise to 48 40 million and in the end we've only paid 31 and a half for him and we could eventually get 42 and a half i actually don't think it's no it isn't it must be of after one international game or 10 appearances or something and it might have been greyed out over 20 appearances it was greyed out and i couldn't change it but it was such a good deal where he just accepted even though we didn't want to sell him the rest of the people that were loaned out are ones of uh with one and a half star current ability or less and some will even less potential ability than two and a half stars so yeah i'm not bothering showing them because they'll probably never make it at the club um, but we have sold Jacopo Sasti. Now, I did not want to sell him. He was in my first team plans. This is why we signed Murphy Mutumbo. Um, because, well, we had to sell Sesti. He was still on the loan list and PSG came in with a loan offer. And I was like, okay, I'm rejecting that because he's in my first team plans. He got furious with me. Furious. They wanted to leave PSG, even though it was a loan deal. I think it might have been maybe payment after a few games or after the or something. But it, for some reason, in FM, and this is a real pet peeve with me, is when you go for a loan offer with an optional fee or mandatory fee or an optional fee after a certain amount of games or something. The AI ask you for extortionate amounts of money, probably more than what they're worth. On so say, okay, I'll go and I'll go in for a loan offer for Sesti. They'll be asking for like 40 million mandatory fee, 50 million optional fee, that sort of stuff. When he's only worth 33 million. Meanwhile, when they come for you, they're offering like not even worth the lowest value. So if they're like 
10 million to 30 million, they're offering like 7 million mandatory fee, 6 million optional fee, and it's just ridiculous. And it, why would you accept that when they're asking for about 40 million for, if it was there on their, if, they were, if the roles were swapped? But yeah, he got unhappy that PS, they wanted to go to PSG. I just fed up with him. So we sold him time track Frankfurt. I wasn't going to sell him at all, you know. But I'm Trek fan for came in with £20 million offer. Uh, 40 million rising to 20 million if you played one game. You played that one game, so it's now 20 million. But I thought it's a low deal. I could ask for more, but it's I'm Trek fan for they're an old club. I want to see them do well. I want to see them win the Bundesliga or another DFB podcast or something along those lines. And so we sold him to them. And yeah, he's hopefully going to do well there. He's a squad player. He's not the best player in their team. But £20 million offer, that's not bad. And yeah, he's already got a release clause for £33.5 million for clubs in the Champions League. So that shows you that I tried Frankfurt to get into the Champions League last season. That's not good. But yeah, he's gone. Because he was being a bit of a nuisance. And in terms of how we started, it's three wins in three, including... 12 0 thumping of Atlanta. For some reason, I noticed this when I recorded the other day's episode. Uh, go watch that now if you haven't already, but you probably would have watched it all now by now. For some reason, whenever we play Atlanta, we always thrash them. Whether it's because of this manager, I don't know if it's the same manager, no, it isn't. Um, but Brian Barry Murphy, um, whenever we played him, we thrashed his teams for Atl- against Atlanta. And one of uh, this guy, Gian Piero Piovani, when he, he started managing Atlanta, we started thrashing them even higher, like 7 0 near the end of the season last year, and now 12 0 at the start of this season. It's crazy. I've never had a 12 0 game. I think I've had a 8 no, I have had a 12 0 game, haven't I? Or was it 10 0? And this season or last season with Real Madrid in Zero to Hero or Manager Legends. No, Manager Legends, this, season, this year's game. But when it was a sim in, it's just crazy. So, yeah, 12 0. Goals from loads of people. Cobo got uh, four goals. Matt Angus got two goals. Bastioni got one goal. Mudrick got two goals. Guerra got two goals. So did Amanboro got a one goal. Both of us, both got two goals scored in the 91st and the 92nd minute. So it should have been 10 0, but they, of course, went sleepy from further. We won 12 0. If we quickly look at the average ratings, yeah, pretty poor. And it looks like the managers just gave up that. It's like, yeah, you know what, I'm just not playing the full subs. <laughs> and one of them was even the 15 minutes because he didn't have a rating, so. But yeah, we only let them have one shot on target. If it had been zero shots on target, it would have been even more for thumping, but yeah, brilliant result there. And because of that, we're currently top of the league with a 20 goal difference in three games. <laughs> so we've won three games, and we've got a 20 goal difference. In the fact we've already conceded one goal, so we scored four against Cagliari and conceded one. We scored five and conceded none against Salon. Tarno, of course, scored 12 against Atalanta. Given this 20 goal difference after three games, that is completely unheard of. I think it's unheard of in real life and in football manager terms, unless you're basically safe scoring so i'm really surprised about that but brilliant but yeah hopefully this form can continue and we finally win a major trophy well we've won a major trophy with the different buckle with our track fun but but now it's the aim to win a major trophy within top can we do it and well it's the same as last season when we've had a bit of a nippy pop we drew against palmer we drew against criminals we lost against lache Drew against Genoa, we drew against Juve, and we drew against Milan. Yeah, uh, we dropped down all the way to the second. Uh, well, it's not all the way, it's only three points off Milan. But Milan are currently undefeated, we of course lost one game, thrashed by Lecce 4 1, who are 13th, so we should really be winning that, like massively, we should be winning that. But yeah, um, it looks like we're just gonna fluster and not win the title. 
I'm going to keep with the tactic. I know it's got the only thing I've actually um, put into the actual positions is Pejanovic. Um, Angeli. Yeah, Angelini. Angelani. What's his name? Angelani. Nicola Angelani or Angeloni. Um, if I go with. Best pick 11, he's ultimately in the side, but Pejanovic isn't. I think he can get to really good potential, so I'm just putting him in the side. Hopefully, he gets to three star, three and a half star by the end of the season, but in the end, he's only played 20 games and not even improved much. So, yeah, I don't think his potential is quite as high as it says it is, which is unfortunate, but hey, I might not put him in as a main player now, but give it out until next season maybe but if it doesn't improve to three star then he's not getting picked for next year but yeah hopefully we still have to turn it around and win trophies and well in the champions league we were knocked out in the round of 16 to psg we ended up finishing 10th in the league phase two points off eighth place stuttgart in the knockout playoff round we ended up being real batiz for two an aggregate and then round 16 we ended up losing 5-2 to PSG to be expected because they are much better the side than us but yeah, I was expecting better considering last year we were running off and no Champions League trophy this year the Copa Italia we were knocked out in the semi-final to Genoa 3-2 in aggregate we lost 3-0 in the final game so if we'd have somehow got a draw we would have gone through but no they won 3-0 through extra time not brilliant, not brilliant one bit. And then Napoli lost to Milan and then Milan played you know, and actually thrashed them 4 now. so yeah. We don't even retain our EES Sports FC Super Cup. In the end we lost 2-1 in extra time to Napoli. Milan won on penalties and Milan won that as well. Milan helmed by Roberto Di Zerbi who if you Remember a bit earlier on in save, managed Inter and won them, what, two or three Serie or Scudettos, whatever they call them, in like four or five seasons. He's not, he then went to Real Madrid, I think he was sacked by Real Madrid because of a poor bit of form. Yeah, he was sacked. And yeah, he's now at Milan and just doing brilliantly with them. And at the expense of his old club, Inter. And you might have been t able to tell because of that little uh, annoyance in my voice. Milan won the title again. That is the fourth time they've won it in five years. We have not won it in six years now. We've been at this club for three seasons. And the only trophy we can have in our cabinet is the Super Cup. Got to the final of the Champions League before losing to Barcelona last year. Got to the final of the Coppa Italia before losing to... Milan and not last season but the first season where I ended up being what two or three points behind Milan and who won the title or was it a point or something like that I don't know I don't remember now and then this season we had 27 wins seven draws four losses 72 gold if it's by miles the best in the league and we only got 88 points not bad points 88 but once one worse than your rivals Milan it's not good enough and yeah because they ended up drawing glass sure they lost one more but ended up winning one more so that's one point they've gained on us that's what wins them the title and that's where champions and winners are seen against well losers that seem to be into Milan. Yeah, uh, in terms of the average rating, Mikhail and Mudrik got the best average rating, then it was Guerra, both with 7.37. Mudrik got the most assists with 19, and Isaacson got the second, third, or se joint second most assists with 13. We're nowhere near the goals with Valhovic getting 24 for Juventus. Punas, who's a new gen coming in from Kegliari, he got the most points. Uh, second most goals with 21 and Sewell got the third most goals with 19. In terms of all the positions um, we got in the top three, 
in second place we've got the most inceptions per nine minutes or second most inceptions per nine minutes with Diamante 3.28 a bit behind Zappa with 3.35 also with Cagliari Cagliari had a, an amazing season they finished fifth um, Genoa had an amazing season finishing seventh and yeah um, Udinese got relegated I think that's a surprise because aren't Udinese quite a good side I'm not really knowledgeable in Italian football to be honest I know more about German, French and Spanish to be honest because like in my lifetime I've never really watched an Italian football match because they've never been available to watch with my service provider. But yeah I hardly know anything about Serie so I don't know how good Udinese are nowadays but finishing 18th to get relegated I think that's a surprise. What are they in season preview? After this season preview they're expected to finish 18th so maybe not as good as they expected them to be. But it's really that good a season Cagliari had, finishing fifth, expected to be finished 15th and finishing 5th and getting Europa League football for next season. Yeah, if we go to team overview, we got the most goals, uh, 15 higher than in Milan, that's crazy. We got 2nd on the shots against, um, not 9 less than, 9 more I should say than Napoli. We ended up getting 7th on possession, normally we're nowhere near that, 54% possession, so it's not that bad, so we had a good season. We had the most dribbles made by over 30 more, or nearly 30 more, something like that. We considered 3rd most goals, Juventus and Napoli had less goals conceded, so maybe that's a way to improve and get us that trophy. Clean sheets, we've got 17, maybe improve goalkeeper of the pub arms so I'm I'm so is getting a bit old. We're nowhere near most tackles won but we never are. We're nowhere near past completion rate. We're top of shots for by distance and of course second in points per game because we finished second. If we quickly look what happened in the January window, it looks like we made some actual some dealings. First off a load of youngsters were loaned out to like third tier or second tier Italian clubs. We also learned out Dean Henderson to Harvard, Havre, Havre, in the top tier of um, France. He's played awfully. 27 conceded in 14 games, 6.35 of a drain. Maybe try and replace him for next season. In the end, three players joined us: Kyle, Komi Diallo, who looks nowhere near good enough. Comes in from Las Palmas. Yeah, he might be a flop. Andrea Bottorelli also joins us. Bit of an expensive fee. 6.25 million from Milan. I think we ever paid a bit there. I'm sure he's now worth more in value, but three star pay potential ability, two star accountability. Uh, and doesn't even play naturally at a position we play at. I mean, I'm sticking with the new ta the same tactic for next season because I think it's a good tactic. We're just getting unlucky. We just need to improve and improve and improve with players coming in. I think this season is a goalkeeper we're aiming for. But yeah, he has joined us. And we also signed Kai Elliott, who is nowhere near good enough. But he was obviously the replacement for Dean Henderson, who went out on loan, like I said. He's only ever played 14 actual appearances in his career and succeeded in every single one of them. <laughs> yeah, and glad he ended up not playing. And he probably accepted an important player for him. So yeah, of course he's unhappy with the grammatic playing time. What rating is he? Decent Serie B player, so yeah. <laughs> yeah, he is just like third choice emergency on the final day of the season when Dean Anderson went on the final day final day of the transfer deadline day as well so yeah he must have left in Henderson and then we're like oh god we need a third goalkeeper so let's get Kai Elliott because he's the cheapest one we can get uh 53,000 pound total fee I think Swansea will be very happy with that who are in the championship and finished 19th by a derby we finished 15th um he's in charge but I mean he's male and we've had quite a lot of managers Paul Wall, Carl Robinson, John Terry Christian O'Leary, even Amaya and Valorant Ismail. But they've been in the championship since the start of the game, so that's not bad to see. Yeah, if we look at the rest of the players, the best players now are Aguero and Mudrick, who have performed and done really, really well. Might be a bit scary because we might have to look at replacing Mudrick now, he's like, he's 31. 
Uh, Alan Burr is coming as a main choice player now, four star current ability. Bastoni is still get, doing good at four stars at three or three years old. Romeo Lava is doing decently at three and a half. Dedish is doing decently at three and a half, but since then I haven't got many others on three and a half or higher. Most played play was Ramsdale in the end, then it was Pet Petrovic, who of course we guarantee you the place. He's not improved once in his current ability and has he improved at all. Hardly at all, so I don't think he'll be given the place next season. I don't think his potential abilities anywhere near three and a half star. I think it must be reached the max now. So he's only going to ever be a two and a half star player. Unless he's of course a late bloomer, but I don't think that matters, even if you're playing if you've been playing early on, so I don't yeah, I don't think that matters. Um Isaacson played a lot and did well. He always does well, Isaacson. I want to get rid of him because I don't think he's any good, but he just overperforms and he always plays in that position. Carboni did well, Angus did well, uh, Bastoni did well, Guerra did well, Angelini. Dele Chill played over 40 games. In terms of goals, Petrini got a load of goals gained, uh, like he did last year on loan, though his potential has gone down. His is nowhere near good enough this league so he might be sold next season. Guerra got 22 goals and was our top goal scorer then Angus got 21 not done too badly for the 21 though he hasn't improved in current ability either might be maxed out on his current ability as well which is unfortunate to say. Bone got 18, Isaac Guns got 17 and Mbury got 11 not bad for the youngster or oh, 24 year old that's not quite a youngster but still quite young Mudrick got 11 and Manini got 10 off uh, all out on loan. He could be in the first team plans next year. If we can try and get him actually be guaranteed a place at AMC or AMR because he's not really natural there. And and some company didn't do too bad. 38 games off the bench, 7 at the start, 8 goals, it's not that bad. Bastoni also got 8 goals. Modric got the most assists for 23, and there was Isaac Summer 17. So we got 17 and 17. Guerra got 15 assists, always overperforming. Brilliant, brilliant player. Romeo Lavagard got 9 assists, Angelini got 7, Bastoni got 6, and then Bernardo got 5. Clean sheets, 3 expected. It was Aaron Ramsdale, Aaron Ramsdale because he was the only player who played in goal late. He got 22 clean sheets. In terms of our drinks, a lot more this season. I mean, somewhere on loan. Oh, out on loan. Modric got over a 7 and was the highest average drain with 7.45. In 7.3s, it was Javi Guerra. 7.2s, it was Gustav Isaacson. Then it goes lower and lower from Rimei Alavia, Diamande, Aaron Buru, Carboni, Bastoni, Milo, and Dedic. So I think we need to improve the goalkeeper slot for next season, maybe a bit more in the defence, get a really, I mean a really good defender, three and a half star common ability player in from defence, four and a half star or four star or three and a half star goalkeeper. I already have one in mind who I have mentioned a couple of years ago in the game, or well I mentioned him when we signed him for a previous club uh, years before. But then I mentioned him again and said how good the player turned in, so I might go for him. If you know who that is, tell me in the comment section if you remember. I'll say one thing, he's Colombian, and we signed him for Salta Vigo. So if you remember that player, write down in the comment section because it helps with the algorithm and means you've been watching the series entirely, which is good. But yeah, uh, another disappointing season. You just can't win anything for some reason. Point behind. Milan with a major goal difference. If I hadn't drawn the games against Napoli, if I hadn't lost to Rome, if I hadn't drawn with the Juventus, if I hadn't lost to Cagliari, if I hadn't lost to Napoli, some of the it basically if I hadn't lost to Cagliari and drawn with Genoa and lost to Lecce, we would have won this title. I'm drawn with Parma. Those four games we could have won. And that's what's cost us this league. But yeah, if you've enjoyed this episode, I recommend that you like the video. Subscribe to the channel as well for more FM24 content videos until the end of FM24, where if there's a beat up for FM25, we'll be.
doing a save with Derby women or Derby ladies. Uh, if there is no beta, then expect the journeyman to start immediately with Zero of the Hero. If what you are voting for on the community page is what happens, because currently only one person has voted as of recording this, and it's been voted for journeyman and rebuilds. So that's what I'm focused on at the point. If you want to decide differently, if you just want rebuilds, you want short series and rebuilds, or all three short series every few weeks, rebuilds and a journeyman series all in one part of a week in videos every release every week, then vote down in the community post um, on my channel page. But yeah, as it's currently going, it's won by rebuilds and journeyman so you can expect the zero to hero coming out as soon as the beta ends and if there is if there is a beta that is if there isn't a beta then like i said it will start straight away and so the rebuilds with probably dog kind ladies but yeah you've liked the video subscribe to the channel do all that other stuff check out all my socials down in the description below come join the community on discord there's only a small few of us it's like four of us but you know, we get along quite well, so if you could come join us and make the community even more active, I would highly appreciate that. I want to turn it into a growing place for just, not just YouTube on my channel, but a community for gaming, for my books when the venture get released, because I am still editing my other book and writing another book as well, so yeah, taking a long time to do it, but yeah. If that interests you, go do that. And yeah, I'll see you all next time. Hex Sandgout. Bye, everybody.